Ah, horse. And when I say horse, I mean My Little Pony. And when I say My Little Pony, I mean not Equestria Girls. Because, well, let's face it, I think I've covered Equestria Girls quite enough for now. I mean, out of the two and a half videos that I've done of one bad analysis so far, two of them have been on the same subject. Maybe I should take a break from the average and okay and the laughably bad to move on to a topic or an episode that I could genuinely sit here and talk about for a good, I don't know, ten minutes or so? Hmm. If only I could think of a topic to talk about. Oh, I know! I'll make one of the laziest kinds of videos. A response video. Yeah, yeah, it's just the music that they have in the Jonathan Creek introduction. I thought that, you know, since I'm about to be doing some murder mystery kind of things, I kind of mimic the style, maybe. Well, I say murder mystery. It's more like murder, you could have done it right, but this is what you did wrong. It, yeah. So, whilst watching Anthony C's triumphant return to horse-related content in the form of his review of the duplication disaster that was Too Many Pinkie Pies, I came across an idea that he briefly touched on. If you haven't watched it, then seriously, just go watch it. It's, it's a good one. But did you know that Equestria Confidential didn't even exist as an idea the last time that Anthony made another numbered reviewing his magic? That's slightly off point. Throughout the video, he makes reference to a 1996 movie titled Multiplicity that I'm not totally ashamed to admit that I have never heard of or watched. I'm just slightly too young. And that the conclusion of this movie is that the clones created by the protagonist go and live their own lives in the big wide world of their own. And you know what I realised? It makes sense! Well, I mean, of course it makes sense, but it even makes sense in the context of this episode. And to be honest, I'm really surprised that Dave Polsky didn't jump at the opportunity to enforce this into the canon of the show. Before I go into detail, perhaps I owe you guys a bit of an explanation. I don't like this episode. Now, granted, there's a lot worse out there, and a lot worse in Season 3, but this episode was definitely one that I always disliked. And, to be honest, apart from his recent stroke of genius with For Whom the Sweetie Belle Toils, I haven't really liked any of Dave Polska's episodes. But this episode in particular? It felt like the starting point for Pinkie Pie's decline in character that we've slowly been seeing since the beginning of Season 3. Because standing in front of a mailbox and expecting mail to immediately arrive since you checked two seconds ago is hilarious. Because pulling a glass of water out your ass only to then spit out said water is the funniest thing. And sitting around drawing in a colouring book whilst important issues are occurring is comedy genius. And let's not forget being distracted by a balloon. Now, granted, Pinkie Pie has always been like this. A brilliant example is the very first episode of the first season. When Celeste disappears, Pinkie doesn't realise how important that is, and when Nightmare Moon reveals itself, she's just cracking jokes. But back then, Pinkie Pie had a lot more to her. She actually had character, and the occasional joke was nothing more than that. An occasional joke, not her defining feature. But recently, this has been her only role. In fact, the same could probably be said for Spike, too. That's Future Spike's problem. Yes, Spike, it was. And then you became Future Spike, and now everyone hates you. And so my point about this episode in particular is that I didn't like the way Pinkie Pie is portrayed here. It's the textbook example of a Flanderized character, and it's because of this episode and a number of episodes that followed that Pinkie Pie has become my least favourite character. And because of that, just one Pinkie Pie is too many Pinkie Pies. Of course, she's had some really good moments since this episode. In fact, Pinkie Pride was my favourite Pinkie Pie episode in the whole show. But for every Pinkie Pride moment, 
You get a couple of these. I'm glad the committee didn't automatically pick me so every pony gets a chance to see how great being me actually is. Even though the festival is basically a party and the pony ceremonies get to organize the whole thing. So it would totally make sense if they did pick me. I mean, the curtain came up and there you were, singing in front of every pony. And you know, I don't think any pony was jealous because there certainly wasn't an angry mob. But it must have been horrible standing there on stage, all eyes glued directly on you. It's like you were living your own personal worst nightmare! So Pinkie Pie, can I hop on you so I can see the breezies? Me explode! Commander Easy Glider was the real cream of the crop. Pinkie, stop! Yes, Pinkie Pie, please, just stop. But before you all go away and angrily type in the comments about my opinion is wrong and whatever you want to say, bear in mind that whilst I don't like her recent change in character, it has nothing to do with this video. This is another one of my fixes, as it were, and this fix has nothing to do with Pinkie Pie herself, but the situation that the characters have been put in. Because whilst I don't like Pinkie Pie all that much these days, the characters in the show themselves have no problem with her. In the context of the show, she's not changed one bit since Twilight first met her. So we'll leave it at that for now. And during this particular episode, she just wants to have a little fun with her friends. And there's nothing wrong with that at all. Except maybe the fact that she realises that she can't be everywhere at once. You know what? You've seen this episode before. I'm not going to explain it for you. Let's just cut to the chase. There's some issues with the number of Pinkie Pies. Uh, Twilight finds a spell. Who would believe is the real Pinkie Pie comes up with this idea to solve the solution. And then we have a couple of minutes of Twilight slowly ending each Pinkie Pie one by one. And this is where we reach our issue. Let's just ignore the fact that Twilight just happened to have a book on a subject that she'd never seen before, hidden behind a secret panel in the library, and touch on the events that followed the discovery of this book. The spell, so we gather, sends the clones back to the pool. It... It... There's no other way of putting it. It destroys them. It reverses the process of their creation. At least... It appears to destroy them, and it's at this point when watching the episode that you realise the consequences of what Twilight is doing. The spell can't tell the difference between what's a clone and what's the original Pinkie Pie, right? Well, that was the whole reason why they needed to devise this test, because there was a risk that they could lose the original Pinkie Pie. So we have to assume that the spell can't tell the difference between what's a horse and what's not. And from that, we can conclude one of two things, either A, the spell is pretty useless, or B, every single Pinkie Pie in that room is identical. Well, on a molecular level at least. Every single one of these clones is just as much a pony as the original Pinkie Pie, as Twilight, who has no issue murdering them all, and as everyone else in all of Ponyville, except Spike of course. And so by extension, each of these ponies has just as much a right to live as everyone else. So this is our issue. The episode seems to suggest, for the sake of creating a, some kind of risk, that there is no difference between the clones and the original. But what's even worse about this whole conflict is that there's another way to solve it that, as I previously mentioned, makes sense in the context of not only this episode, but the whole show. I suppose maybe the only issue with this solution is that it would be a logistic nightmare. And then you could argue that the best solution to a problem is usually the easiest one, but this is the same show and the same team of writers that had a needlessly complicated ending to Equestria Girls. So yeah, complicated ending it is. Remember when there were just two Pinkie Pies? Apart from a little breakdown because she didn't get any fun, the clone seemed pretty content with everything. Left to her own devices, she didn't really cause any issue apart from maybe confusing Fluttershy a bit and getting names wrong, but nothing too serious. And this shows us two things. One, that the clones on their own aren't an issue at all. Only when together in large groups is there really an issue. It kind of all leads to suggest that Ponyville, and probably every other town in the Questure, can only really deal with about one Pinkie Pie at a time. And two, that for that very brief moment, 
This clone lived her own life, with her own decisions, all on her own. And then there's the confusion with the names, which is mentioned later during the episode, which kind of shows that she didn't share the memories with the original Pinkie Pie. Again, it's almost like she's her own person, with her own memories, not with existing memories of stuff like, I don't know, names. I didn't make it! I was on my way there and then Fluttershy, her, Fluttershy, yeah, her, she offered something else fun for me to do, a picnic with cute little animals! Ah, how could you say no to that? That's what I'm saying! Then I would've missed the super fun thing with Applesauce! Applejack! Perhaps her way around Ponyville. Applejack's having a barn raising at... <laughs> it's that away! But she's still the same carefree and fun-loving Pinkie Pie that the rest of the main cast know and love. And so, to you, dear viewer, the solution that I would suggest would be rather than killing all the clones, you just send them off to live their own life all on their own. Her friends love spending time with Pinkie Pie, right? She's always making them smile, she's always throwing a good old party, and if magical mystery cure is to be believed, she's one of the main sources of happiness in all of Ponyville. So how about, I don't know, sharing this feeling of love and happiness to everyone else in the entirety of the country? Why don't they give a Pinkie Pie to every town, city, village, every hut that a hermit calls home in the entirety of Equestria? They don't even have to change the method that they go about this test at the end. They can still do this needlessly odd watching paint dry thing, but instead of just killing the Pinkie Pie straight off, you use this test to separate the clones from the original. See? That wasn't so hard. Just make sure you put a bell around her neck or something. You then go through the long and drawn out process of getting each of these Pinkie Pies on a train and just dropping them off wherever you want and having them live out their own life. And maybe, apart from the cheese sandwiches of this world who might have some competition to come up with, the Pinkie Pie clones should, if they really are all a blank slate, adapt to their own life pretty well without causing anyone any issues. After all, it was only as a group that they were a real issue. They can have their own friends, have their own place to live, their own personality, just generally live their life on their own as an individual. You could almost say that in this episode there weren't too many Pinkie Pies, but there were just the right amount of Pinkie Pies. Meanwhile, back in Ponyville, everyone can still make precautions. They can still stick a rock in the hole that led to the mirror pool. They can still have this chat with Pinkie Pie where she apologises. And they can even still write a letter to Celestia and it would be no different. Because this episode overall, even if I didn't particularly like Pinkie Pie in it, would have been a lot better if they'd never found that spell or that book. Okay, granted, getting everyone on a train and transporting them to different towns and cities all around Equestria would have been a long process, but would it have been worth it for the sake of your friend? Yeah, probably. And I know how far-fetched a lot of this all sounds, and I know I'm expecting a lot from this episode, but when it comes to it, the implications of this episode are pretty terrible, and I'd prefer any solution than the one they had over the one that actually happens in the episode and hey maybe even the one that i've suggested just anything that is different from what they actually did i guess i just like this solution because i can back it up with evidence from the rest of the episode and even other episodes in the series but we'll just have to settle with what we got and we'll just have to settle with a poorly written episode with terrible morals and we'll have to settle with the fact that we don't know if the real Pinkie Pie survived or not. Wait a minute. Of course! That's why she's been so different since this episode. The real one didn't survive. It's a clone. It's a completely exaggerated clone. Uh, right? Yeah? You, you agree with me, right? No? No, no one? Oh, sod off. Oh, and I know this video is going to get a lot of comments because I don't like Pinkie Pie, so I really would like to respond to comments like that, but 
Well, some of you don't let me reply to your comments. For whatever reason. I'm not really sure why. Someone told me once that it was because you don't have your account linked to Google Plus or something, which I didn't even think you could do these days. But then I discovered that you can actually block replies on comments. And because I really like talking to you guys in comments, it's good because it's an extension on this video and it means I don't have to like follow up this video with something else. It means I can just talk to you individually and also in a public place at the same time. So, I really like comments, and it's kind of annoying when it's always the comments that I want to reply to that I can't. So, I'd kind of really appreciate it if you can, like, sort something out so I can actually reply to you. So, yeah. See you later.